Hi there, welcome to the video. If this is your first video, welcome. Consider subscribing to my channel if you're interested in AI, if you're interested in botting, World of Warcraft. If you've been following along with the tutorial, welcome back. So right now I'm going through a debug script on all of the available movements that I've programmed in. So I've got left, right, forward, backward, strafing, unsheathing the weapon, sitting down. So I've basically put together a really simple script that encapsulates all of those functions that we can then program to use. So you can see my guy moving around right now, hands off. And additionally, uh, we, we can test out all those functions. So the thing's working good. Now the good, the good part is, is that this is a super easy tutorial, guys. So if this is your first one, if you're interested in just learning a little bit about automation, this is a great tutorial because it doesn't just apply to, to World of Warcraft in this bot, but you could use this for any game. As a matter of fact, you can use what you're gonna learn today really for any application of automation, other types of programs or things at work. So it's a great first tutorial and it's a super easy one to implement. So we're gonna jump over to the code and I'm gonna show you what I've got. Now, as always, the code is available for download from my Git repository. So if you just wanna get a copy of it and play around, download it from the Git. I recommend though that you go through and you type some of it in that builds muscle memory and understanding. So let's go over to the code now. Okay, so here we are in the code. So we're working with two libraries today, guys. Now I've created a new file called move.py. So you can add this to our project if you've been following along with the project, or if you're just doing this standalone, this is still gonna work. This entire Python file can work totally standalone and it can be used for any game or any application. But we're gonna be working with two libraries today. We're gonna be working with the Py Auto GUI lib library, which my followers are familiar with, but if you're not familiar with, this is a automation library that will allow us to control the keyboard, mouse, and other things automatically. And we're using the time library. This is a standard library, part of Python standard library that's gonna be used for uh, basically some time delays. Now, the first thing that I've done is uh, I've created some constant variables here. And what this is gonna be used for is this is going to hold the keys that is, are associated with a certain activity. So, so for example, jumping is the space bar in, in my game. Your game, and again, this could be changed to any game or any application, but jump is spacebar, left is A, so we basically have WASD controls. Uh, we have Q and E for strafing, left and right. Uh, we have Z key, which basically unsheaths the sword, and we have the X key, which basically uh, sits and stands. So these are the, the keys that I've programmed in that are associated with World of Warcraft. Again, your game could have different keys, and this could be made you know, this could be used for any type of application. This could even be used for spreadsheets if you wanna automate spreadsheet applications. But, but anyways, this is very self-explanatory. Now, normally I would go through and I would type this code live right with you guys so you can see all my mistakes and you know, my thoughts as I'm making the code. But because today's code is so simple, guys, so easy, I didn't wanna take up your time because we're gonna be typing the same commands over and over and over again. As you can see, it's all copy, copy and paste. And I don't wanna take up your time. So let's go quickly through it. You're gonna very quickly understand how this works. So for each of our controls, we're gonna have a start and a stop function. So for example, when we wanna move forward, we wanna start moving forward and then we wanna stop moving forward. And it's very simple to start moving forward in World of Warcraft, we would press the W key and we would hold our finger on that key. So we want Pi Auto GUI to do the same thing. So to initiate that command, we simply call Pi Auto GUI dot key down. Now the key down is different than dot pressed. We've used dot pressed in other tutorials. Pressed is just boop, press the key. Key down is put your finger on the key and hold it down. So in this case, Pi Auto GUI key down, and I'm using that forward key, which is my W key. So this is gonna tell Pi Auto GUI to put your finger down on the W key and hold it until I say take it off. So the start, the start function will hold that key down forever and the stop function will call this key up function. Now key up, it, key up tells Pi Auto GUI to take your finger off the key, very simple. So each of these forwards, backwards, left, right, strafe, they all have a start and a stop function using the key up and key down functions. Very, very simple. Let's look at uh, jump, which is a little bit different. So what I've done is for some movements like jump, they don't require a certain amount of time. In World of Warcraft, it doesn't matter how long you hold the jump button down. As soon as you tap it, your character jumps the same 
If you hold it, they jump the same. It's just a toggle. Now in other games that may not be the case or in other applications that may not be the case. So I did not program jump to have two functions, start and stop. I just programmed a jump function, which is just a key press. So keep this in mind. If you're using this, if you're using this in a different game or different application, jump will, will function like just a quick tap. So if your game requires you to hold the jump button to continue jumping higher, you're gonna wanna do something more like a start and stop like I've done here. So keep that in mind. Now I've also, so, so before I go on, basically that is all of the basic movements. Now I've also created some more uh, slightly complex movements if you wanna think of them as complex. I guess they're just a little bit more complex coding wise. But these are for convenience, because I think we're going to be using a lot of bumping. Now, what do I mean by bumping? So in the game, we may want to just move our character forward just like a little bit, like somebody tapped the W key. Like maybe you just want to like slightly align your character to the left or right. You might just tap A or D. So I didn't want to always have to program like start turning left, hold it for 0.01 seconds, stop turning left. You know, that would get kind of cumbersome and silly. So I created these bump functions and I might even program this in with an optional argument. So actually that might even be a good idea. So my idea, so, so for example, the, uh, you know, time could be maybe 0 0.05 by default and we pass in the time here. Well, I don't want to call that time. That's going to conflict with the time library. Let's call this, uh, we'll just call this T. Couldn't think of a better word than that. Sorry. So, uh, this I'm, I'm going to update these later so you can actually update these so we can pass in optionally a time if we want to bump for longer or shorter but this default value worked pretty good when I tested it so this is kind of like a person tapping the forward key and you, your character kind of just goes boop now if we didn't do this if we use like the press function here and we, and we just pressed it it's so fast it's much faster than you can physically type a keyboard it's so 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 fast it's almost instantaneously that your character isn't going to move, and it and it's kind of it's not very natural behavior. So that's why we're using these bump functions here, and the bump function is going to have this. Uh, right now, it's going to have a 0 0.05 second delay. So it's like holding down the key for a 0 point, uh, 0 0.05 seconds and letting the key up. So all I have to do now is call this bump function, bump forward, and that's going to bump my character forward because it's a very small amount of time. So that's what all these little bump functions do. Of course, sheath is just a, a button press, sit is just a button press. And then down here, uh, this is where I would encourage you to create, either copy mine or create your own debug script where you can kind of go through all of the actions. So what's happening here is, you know, I'm jumping, then um, Python is sleeping for one second, so it's basically pausing the code for one second. Then I'm gonna start running. Python's gonna pause for two seconds, so it's gonna let the character run straight for two seconds. Then it's gonna to try to start strafing left. Then it's gonna stop strafing left. Then it's gonna start strafing right. So you can follow through. I'm not gonna go through all this. It's very self-explanatory, self but basically this will let you test that all of your functions are working properly, that all of your character movements are working properly. Once you have this done, once you're able to use all of these commands, you basically have a full movement, at least in World of Warcraft, you have a full movement control now. You can jump, you can move. Now your character's obviously not gonna know where to go or you know what to fight, but that's logic stuff. As far as actually just controlling your character, this is pretty much almost all of it. The only thing left is the spell casting, and I've already got a video on spell casting. You saw that that's also quite easy to implement. So go ahead and, and uh, Play with this on either World of Warcraft, your game, or your application, and let me know in the comments if you have any, any questions or suggestions, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Like and subscribe. I appreciate you. Have a great rest of your day.